everything my, my presentation is already said. First of all, thanks a lot for you to stay here. Okay, better to stay here and your interest in my in my city in, in Medellin. Uh, first of all, I, first of all, I want to explain a little bit where Medellin is located. Right, Medellin is the second largest city of Colombia. Uh, that is in the north part of South America, is the capital of a state that is called Antioquia. So Medellin is a 2.5 million inhabitant city. Uh, it's located in a pretty narrow valley, so in some ways it's a pretty long city, and the metropolitan area of Medellin is around 4, mil 4 million people, uh, 1,500 meters above the sea. So it's called it like the, the eternal spring city. Uh, so we don't have seasons, so at the end it's, it, it's pretty much the the, the, the initial backup of Medellin. Uh, this is just uh, the landscape of my, of, of my city. As I told you, we, we have to grow up because we don't have enough space nowadays. And, and what I want to tell you actually is the story on how Medellin, from 1991, we were the most dangerous city in the world. We have uh, 6, 6, 63, more than 6,300 murders by 100,000 inhabitants it was the, by far the most dangerous city in the world. I was a teenager at that time, actually, and every day I have to be in my house. Everybody in the city has to be in his house at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Nobody has able to be in the at night in, in around the city. And quickly we have a bomb anywhere because of terrorism, uh, narco terrorism uh, with the drug dealers and the Medellin cartel. Uh, Every day was a murder of, po of policemen. So it was a really, really, really uh, difficult days. Actually, the economists at that time told us that Medellin was a failed city. But in 2013, we won a prize as the most innovative city in the world. So how the hell that happened? That happens from in less than 25 years. That's, that's what, what I want to tell you a little bit, the, at least the key factors that help us to move forward in that direction. The first one is this company. Actually, I'm part of that company in business development also. This company is EPM. EPM is a, is, it used to be a utility company of the city. It provides water, sewage, solid waste management, electricity uh, to the city and the, uh, its inhabitants. But nowadays, actually, it's, it's operating in six countries in Latin America. It actually, is, its sales, annual sales is around seven billion. And the municipality, as the only owner, receives back from the, from, the, from the company around, this year was around 1 billion euros. So a company, a utility, at least in Latin America, normal, the normal thing is actually the, the city has to give money to the utility in order to operate and provide the basic services. In our case, this company is wealthy enough to give back to the city as the, as the owner a lot of money for social investment and to help the, the, the company, the, the city, sorry, to move forward. So that's pretty important for the city. The second topic is the, the most important economic group in Colombia is based in Medellin. That is the, that is the picture of Bank Colombia. That is the largest bank of Colombia. That actually is a pretty unique case in Latin America. The biggest bank in Colombia, and the second one and the third one are Colombian banks. In all Latin America, the biggest banks are from abroad. So that economic group is really interested not only in profits, of course, but really interested in what is happening in Medellin and in the state, in Antioquia, and are really involved and are supporting all the efforts that Medellin are, are moving forward. Actually, because of narco traffic and that, that stuff in, at, the begin, at the end of the 80s and the beginning of the 90s, uh, this economic group uh, took the decision to sell you know, actions between the main companies in order to protect them. Uh, against the, the drug dealers and, and, the, and the money from them to, to, to be part of the company. So that's other key issue uh, about, about Medellin, that the private sector is pretty well involved in what is happening there. The, the third topic is urban innovation. So Medellin is the only city, is the second largest, I told you, but it's the only city that have a metro system in Colombia, uh, nowadays. But not only a metro system, but also we use lifts, as a way of transportation, as I told you, we are in the middle of a valley. We have hills all around. So beautiful landscape, but some difficult in order for transportation and that kind of things. Uh, but at the same time, we also use uh, other kind of transportation 
a, this is just a picture of, uh, this is the, the leaf, and actually we use leaf for the poorest neighborhoods of the city. This is, in the, this is one of the poorest neighborhoods of the city. You can see the leaves, and that, one, that building there is a, is a library, actually. So we start building that kind of infrastructure in the poorest neighborhoods, the best infrastructure, not only libraries, not only transportation, but also schools, but also you know, sports facilities, in order that, that people feel connected with the city, and people actually become part of the life of the city. The, the people that actually suffer the most uh, where, with, with all the narco traffic and the violence uh, get, get really involved. And this is an example. We also use electrical stairs uh, for the people to go up into the hills, right? So, and the people not only use this, the electrical stairs, but they appropriate the space. So they start to paint graffitis, and nowadays in, uh, there is a, actually a tour, a, the graffiti tour in Medellin, because people actually, uh, actually be part of the, of, of, the, of the new life of the city. So that's really important. And nowadays, these neighborhoods that in the past, nobody wants to go there, actually it was pretty dangerous, is, is part of the touristic, uh, uh, that, that you have to, to really visit when you go to Medellin. Okay, the other, the other part is that the, there are some institutions that are really helping uh, what is happening in Medellin. One of those is Pro Antioquia. Pro Antioquia is an NGO, but it's owned by the biggest company of the region. But, they, and, but actually in Pro Antioquia, we as a city incubate the most important projects of the, of the city. So, I don't know, 30 years ago, the metro system, but after that, incubators, but, but also, you know, roads, the main roads, connect Medellin, but also, uh, Ruta N, that I was part of, was the, the institution in, in charge of all the innovation, effort and innovation policy for Medellin. So at the end, it's a pretty interesting uh, organization because as an NGO, owned by the rich people of the city, if you want to, is helping the municipalities, helping you know, the, the local government to move forward and to incubate the biggest projects of the city. So it's a pretty unique uh, case also. Also, we have a an institution that we call it the, you know, the universities, uh, private sector, and, and local and regional government uh, organization. And every month, every first Friday of each month, we have a, a perfect excuse to come together to speak, to talk a little bit about different kind of topics. So we, it's just a, as an excuse to know each other, to gain confidence between us, uh, and that helps us a lot. Because at the end, always there is, you know, Something is going to happen in, the, in, in that session. But the most important part is what is happening after or before that session. People just stay there and, and talk with each other and know each other. Uh, so the, the mayor is going to talk with, I don't know, with, the, with the, the president of the university or with the, the CEO of one of the biggest companies. So at the end, at the end it's, it's, it's help us that everybody is on the same page, that everybody has the same vision. And I think that's important. At that time where we have in the middle of huge troubles, at the end, you know, the universities, the local government, and the private sector put together a vision for Medellin, a long-term vision, a common vision. And that's really, that was really important in order to, to overcome that situation. Uh, for the Medellin development, so I want to tell you about the three main pillars that we put together. The first one is education. So we truly believe that through education, we, we can transform our, our society. So we are making a huge effort since more than 20 years ago, uh, putting together you know, schools, kindergarten even, uh, new opportunities in universities uh, for the poorest people. So we have a, you know, high level uh, schools in the poorest neighborhoods to, in order to you know, try to avoid the, the inequality that we still have a lot of inequality, unfortunately, in Medellin. So that's the first pillar. The second one is entrepreneurship. Medellin is, is well known at the Colombian level as the, as, the, as the capital of entrepreneurship, if you want. You know, since a long time ago, the biggest, whatever you want, the biggest bank, the biggest cement company, the biggest uh, food company, the biggest ceramic company, the biggest whatever company in, in Colombia was started in Medellin. 
So, but we were losing that, that position as an entrepreneur because of narco traffic, because of that, that huge problem. So we put together a lot of efforts in order to incentivate again uh, the entrepreneurship as a pillar in order to overcome that situation. And the third one is innovation. Because we, we also want to be uh, a city known as an innovative city. So uh, I already told you a little bit about the urban innovation that happens in Medellin, right? Use, you know, lifts for urban transportation, electrical stairs, you know, to move people in the hills, just, just as a couple of examples. But also technological innovation and, and social innovation. So we put together this organization that is called Ruta N. It's publicly owned, but actually serves for all the city and works with the private sector. Actually, at the end, the most important thing that, 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 that the public sector has to be is, you know, to put to get to foster what it has to happen, not to do it by themselves. So what this institution is trying to do is to foster uh, the most important things for, Med for Medellin. And it's doing it in three, in three main topics. The first one is innovation culture. So it's, the idea behind that is that in Medellin, the citizens of Medellin uh, wants to be innovators. And not only wants to be innovators, but also demand innovation, demand innovation products, innovation services, innovative services, innovative products. And, and that is going to help us to foster and to move forward uh, the innov innovation as a, as a strategy. The second one is to develop en the enough capabilities that we need to, to have in place in order to foster innovation. So business incubators, I don't know, technology transfer offices, uh, I don't know, IP, IP experts, and all that kind of stuff that you need to have in place in order to actually to be an innovative economy. And, and the third one is, is business development. So we need to help not only entrepreneurs, but also SMEs and big corporations to move forward this idea to be more innovative. So uh, that's the three main pillars, and that's the way that we, we foster. Uh, of course, there are a lot of, a lot of specific programs in each of those pillars, but we, that's the way we put together uh, the innovation effort for Medellin. Also, we decide to define economic sectors in which we have some advantages. So we, put, we, we decide to, to put together our efforts in, in six main sectors. I'm not going to talk a lot about, the, about that, them, but the important part is actually that uh, when you decide to focus your effort in a specific sector, it's going to help you to, you know, the, the resources that, are all, that always are not enough uh, is, is going to be used in a, in a better way. And not only that, but we put together a science, technology, and innovation plan 2011, 2021, so for 10 years, in three of those sectors, in energy, in health, and in ICT. So we have a roadmap. We put together a roadmap and focus our effort as a city. And this plan, uh, it becomes a law, a city, a city law level. Uh, and, and the city is, in some ways, obligated nowadays to put money each year in order to, to move forward with the accomplishment of this plan. So that's the, the idea was focusing in specific sectors when you have some advantages, uh, put together a plan and a roadmap in order to, to move forward with a clear vision of what you're going to accomplish. And take it down into our mind, we'll, that into mind, we also try to move forward a new urban rehabilitation of, of, of an area of Medellin. Medellin is, a, as I already told you, is a Unfortunately, still nowadays, it's a pretty unequal city. So we have in the south part of the city neighborhoods that I don't know, have European standards of living. Uh, but in the north part of the city, we have some, some neighborhoods that probably has, I don't know, African standards of city. That's, at, you know, four kilometers away, one, one neighborhood of the, of the other. So we put together Ruta in that building that I already, already showed you in the north part of Medellin. In a, in a neighborhood with a lot of issues, a lot of problems at that time. What, but the idea behind that was not only to send a message, a message, sorry, but also to put together a new urban rehabilitation based on innovation in 150 hectares of the area. And we are moving forward in that effort. Of course, it's, it's, it's a long-term project, but we still have some, some, some success. Uh, this is just some of the companies from all around the world that are already arrived to Medellin in order to move forward their innovative businesses 
for at least for Latin America, in some cases, uh, uh, wor their worldwide uh, businesses. So something is happening. So people from all around is coming to Medellin. Is is finding that Medellin is a good place to to, to not only to live but to make to, to businesses uh, and a, fr a friendly and, the, and, and, and a friendly environment. So at the end, that's the that's the kind of things that we we put together in order to gain this. Sorry that it's in Spanish. But we won a prize as the most innovative city in the world in 2013. Why? Because we have a clear long-term vision, because we put together a plan, because we define a roadmap, because everybody, public sector, private sector, universities, citizens, was involved in the, the plan. And, and at the end, it, it, it led us to overcome that really difficult situation. We are far away to, to be a perfect city. Actually, nowadays, we are having some issues related with rapid growth, like, you know, like air pollution, traffic jams, and that kind of things. But that's, that's the way that we find uh, our own way to move from, in some way, from the ashes to what, what Medellin is, is today. Uh, but since 2013, we're still moving forward. This is just a picture of the, uh, we, we make an innovation pact. Is, uh, so citizens and companies that want to be part of the pact just have to sign it. Uh, and they voluntarily, uh, voluntarily they, they is going to spend X, um, X per percentage of the income in research, development, and innovation. So nowadays we have more than 600 companies that voluntarily sign the, the pact. So the people are, are moving forward, are thou and thousands of citizens that actually are, are also part of the, pa the pact. And that, that is going to help us uh, that everybody is involved in the effort, still involved in the effort. Uh, and the numbers say so. So I'm, I'm going to finish this, this just showing you what is happening. We were part of the Innovation Citix Index that is made by a company called Two Thing Now from, from Australia. And this is the way that we are evolving. As I told you, we are far away, but we started just a few years ago. Uh, it, the, we, and our rank was 307. Uh, last year was 142. So we are in the, in the right path, right? We are, we are moving as a more innovative society, as a more innovative city. Uh, and, that's, that's the, that's the, and we think that the numbers at the end uh, is supporting what we are saying. It's not just words. And the, this is other, other example. We are growing faster than the rest of the country, and, but, not all, but not only all, but we are, uh, sorry, there are some slides in Spanish. Uh, the poverty level is, 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 is also declining. Is the, the less poverty, it's a declining 56% in the last 11 years. So at the end, it's, it's a number that, su that is supporting what is happening in Medellin. Uh, at the same time, uh, the Gini, the Gini, the coefficient that is for, Inequality is also becoming better, even better than the rest of the country. We, ha we still have a lot of things to do in inequality in Medellin, but we think that we are going in the right path, right? And the, the, develop the human development index are also growing, so all the numbers, all the index, all the uh, is supporting what we are doing. It looks like that makes sense what we are doing and what is happening in Medellin. Uh, the, the, our child are, are staying in, the, in, in, in schools. That was part of the problem, right? That they were not staying in, in the schools. And at the end, we were, we were defined as the, as the highest quality of life city in Colombia. But not only that, we actually became the best city to live in Latin America last year. So if you see, Something is happening in Medellin, and we put together a lot of effort, and I think that uh, no, not, nothing is perfect, but I think that we are going in the right path, and, and it's, an, it's an honor uh, for me, actually, to be in some way part of the, all this process. Uh, so the, all the entrepreneurship effort, all the innovation effort, all the urban development effort, this idea, this vision to have the best for the poorest, uh, I think that may, make the, a huge difference in Medellin. You know, 20 years ago, the people in the, up in the hills 
uh, the, poor, the poorest neighborhood, when they need to go to the downtown Medellin, they say, I'm going to go to Medellin. It's I live in other city. They live in Medellin, but they said, I'm going to go to Medellin. They, they were not part of the city. They didn't feel part of the city. Now, what is they feel part of the city, they understand that the, that, that the city is doing a huge effort in order to connect everybody to be a more equal city. And the numbers are showing that we are in the, in, in the right position uh, and in the right path, in the right way. Uh, pretty much that's it. I don't know if I am good in, in time, but I, I, I want to leave some, some, some minutes if you have some questions or, or, or some comments about this. Okay? Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Juan Pablo. Is there sure. any questions quickly for Juan Pablo? Yeah. Wait a second. How do you see the, the peace process in Colombia? Is it an opportunity or a challenge for Medellin in terms of uh, the likelihood of uh, having uh, people leaving the countryside and uh, coming to live in the city? Will there be more pressure on urban development uh, due to these changes that are happening in the country and especially in the countryside? Yeah, that's a huge issue for Colombia. And specifically for in the case of Medellin, Medellin is not a rich city, but it's a wealthy city in a state that is really poor. So there are a lot of pressure because a lot of people is, is coming to Medellin in order to find opportunities, you know, jobs. and uh, So just provide the basic services to them is, is a huge issue. And what we are trying to do nowadays is to put together programs and projects that involve all the, all the state. So and other parts between, you know, between the city and the state, uh, put together some specific projects that help us to provide some services, some oppor better opportunities for people in the, in the smallest towns around the, around the state. Just to put you up a couple of examples. One of those is we are building a big, road network connecting Medellin with, with the, the most important parts of the state and of the country uh, that is going to provide, and is providing actually new opportunities, jobs, and whatever to the people in the countryside. Uh, uh, but also, uh, we, are, we are trying to, actually we're having another issue nowadays in Colombia. Because of the, the situation in Venezuela, a lot of people from Venezuela are coming to Colombia. It was exactly in the opposite direction 20 years ago. Everybody was going to Venezuela. Venezuela was a pretty rich country with a lot of opportunities. So we only, not only have, are having issues with our own people, but people from Venezuela. What we are, what we are doing actually is, is understanding that that was the way that 20 years ago was the, in the other way. Try to provide basic, basic services to them. Try to that they feel part of the, of, of the country and of the situation, and it's, it's always a pressure about that. But we are trying to do our best. Let's see. Um, I've got a question because it's impressive, but what created the dynamics at the beginning, or who? Is it the mayor? Is it... Uh... Well, you know, I think that uh, Fortunately for us, we have for almost 20 years the same line, the mayors with the same vision, the same line of vision. That helps us a lot. But of course, the private sector, imagine in some ways similar to Barcelona in the way that people really care about the city. People love Medellin. The Paisas, the, the name of the, the way that we have, the Paisas loves the city. And our city actually is a pretty clean city, it's a pretty beautiful city. People care about the city. That's really important. That is not happening in Bogota, for example, the capital city of Colombia. It's a beautiful city. Actually, I was born in Bogota, but that is not happening there. So at the end, the people get involved, and the private sector get involved in the issue. So it was a combination of everything, right? I think that the most important part was actually that we put together a clear long-term vision. And together is together. Everybody was involved in that. In, in that. I, I, just, I just remember a, a specific topic. Uh, I don't know, probably around eight years ago, HP, Hewlett Packard, was looking for a place in Latin America in order to, to, to establish a new uh, operation uh, 
center for them. They, gonna, they will have at that time three operation centers in the world. And the, and the charge in that, that it was a senior vice president, has a meeting with uh, a, a, a president of, a uni of the biggest university of the, of the city, then has another meeting with, a, with the CEO of one of the biggest companies, and then have a lunch with our mayor. And then have a, have a meeting with us in Rutani. And he told us, you know what? Something happened in Medellin. Everybody says exactly the same thing. I know you just talk, talk a lot between you, but all of you say what you want to do in Medellin, what is happening in Medellin. Everybody is in the same page. And that is really important for a city. So I think at the end, that, that's the, the, main, the main difference uh, for Medellin. Thank you very much, Juan Pablo. Thanks a lot. Please. Some applause for Pablo. Thank you. Thank you.